Hi, this is Chris Forsberg. I'm the Global Chief Architect at Society. And today I want to talk about how you can deliver digital solutions in a beautiful way. This image is from a 360 video showing the office of one of our clients in the Netherlands, ING Bank. And I think it shows what this beautiful delivery could look like. But before I talk about what I mean by beautiful delivery, let's start with the big picture and what the main purpose of your organization is. The most common answer is to maximize the profit and the return on investment for shareholders, a view that was famously stated in an article by Milton Friedman in the New York Times. Even if Jack Welch, the CEO of General Electric for many years, was one of the most efficient practitioners of this view, he later called it the dumbest idea in the world and added, shareholder value is a result and not a strategy. Peter Drucker had a much more important message, and that was to focus primarily on the customer. The truth is that both matters, but it's healthy to start with the customer, or as we call it, an outside-in perspective, while at the same time consider the benefits of the business. It might seem like a small difference, but it's actually pretty drastic, and I would like to compare it with what Copernicus realized, that instead of the Earth, in this analogy, the organization being the center, it's actually the sun, which in the analogy is uh, the customer. Interestingly, the latter is not wrong. It's just taking a subjective viewpoint. And as you can see here, it makes reality very complex. Taking a more objective viewpoint, placing the customer in the center, makes it easier to understand how her ecosystem of value actually works. In a more humanistic or emotional way, it's actually about compassion. That is, putting someone else before yourself. So when you understand that your organization have to be obsessed with the customer, you realize that this also has to be your employee's primary focus in everything that they do. Sure, they need the process and tools, but without the right mindset, the processes and the tools are useless. So what is the desired mindset? There are a number of human abilities that are especially important, and I call them the five C's, or C to the power of five. The first one is compassion, which is about empathy and the understanding of how others feel. The next is curiosity and how we engage to learn something new, which leads to creativity and our ability to bring things together in new ways. But all of this is useless if we don't take initiative, commit, and carry out something. In that process, it's important to use cross-disciplinary thinking and seeing things from different perspectives, but also about reaching out and ask others for help. Even if we all know these skills, we have to practice them every day. Also, in our world, people are increasingly looking for purpose, and the most efficient way to motivate people is to put them in control. A way to do that is to create autonomous teams. So let's look at the day with an autonomous team and their beautiful way of delivering digital solutions directly to customers. The morning starts with a new idea the product owner got from a customer on Twitter. She checks the analytics and confirms that this could be a problem for many users. She gathers the team and they talk about how to solve the problem with regards to the customer experience, design, technical solutions, and even if a business model change is needed. They conclude that this is urgent and to decide to fix it today. The product owner, the tester and the agile coach starts to write requirements and define tasks. The architect sketches the solution and the designer sketched the user experience and the UI. The developer prepares the environment and thinks about the implementation. One hour later, the team meets to go through everything together, and now they have a shared view of what to do. The developer starts coding the implementation and unit tests, constantly committing, which results in a new deploy distribution that everyone can try out. Everyone iterate on their part, that is, the scope, requirements, architecture, design, test. There is a constant sync going on involving everyone, 
and there is often work in pairs. There is also a frequent validation happening by the tester, agile coach and product owner. When the team is done, which means that they have something that works with high quality, they release it to a small targeted group of early adopters, which are encouraged to try and give feedback. The customer that gave the feedback is also invited to try it with a public response on Twitter. Responding like this to customer feedback the same day is actually some very powerful marketing. Before they go home, the team capture what they have learned today and adjust how they work, the tools they use, any necessary refactoring of the architecture and code, etc. Well, that was impressive. So let's have a look at what makes this magic happen. In summary, it's about organization and technology to accomplish quality at speed. The organization is how to move from hierarchies to autonomous teams and group of such teams all the way to ecosystems that involve partners and even competitors. The autonomous team is responsible all the way from customer need to run in production. And everyone in the team is responsible for everything, especially the quality. The main part of technology is automation, and the goal is to automate everything from builds, tests, deployment, distribution, to task management and feedback loops. I would even go so far to say that every manual operation is a bug. Another critical part is to continuously improve and learn, with constant refactoring of everything, like architecture and code, but also tools and process. This is the team's process. Start with an assumption or an idea, preferably based on previous learning. Find the simplest way possible to prove that assumption and build it. It could be a prototype, something even simpler, or a real product and service. But remember that building a product and a service is probably the most expensive way of finding out. And then gather as much information as possible and use clearly defined metrics to evaluate the initial assumption, capture what you learned, and then refactor. So let's talk about the different roles in the autonomous team. The product owner is ultimately responsible for the end result, which could be a product or a service. The product owner represents the stakeholders and is the voice of the customer, and define metrics to measure success. The product owner writes user stories and prioritizes them based on value versus effort, and is also mainly responsible for the communication outside the team, such as stakeholder demos, releases and team status. The product owner uses tools like effect mapping, service design with customer journey maps, as well as metric management, monitoring and analytics. The main responsibility of the Agile coach is to make sure everyone work efficiently together, which means coaching the Agile process promotes self-organization and the cross-functional approach. Everyone in the autonomous team should have a PI or E-shaped skill set. The Agile coach also captures business rules, detailed requirements into specific tasks and facilitates the team events. The Agile coach uses tools for requirement and work management like Jira and various soft skills like workgroup skills and group dynamics. The main responsibility of the architect is to make sure that the end result rests on a solid technical foundation. The architect is responsible for defining the architectural principles and the non-functional requirements, including security, and also evaluates new technology. The architect sets up the digital platform, usually in the cloud, and is also responsible for its governance and configuration management. The architect also defines the master data in service interfaces and even coach the actual implementation. 
The architect uses tools like a generic reference architecture, which main purpose is to allow the touch points, the webs, the apps, the bots and the connected things to move fast even if the backend systems are hard or slow to change. The architect also used specific implementations of the generic reference architecture for different platforms. Here is an example using Microsoft technology to be deployed in the Azure cloud. The architect also used tools for cloud management, like our own OneShare service offering. The main responsibility of the designer is to make sure that the final result is beautiful and that it delights the customer. That includes the definition of the user experience and the user interface, which include the design guidelines. The designer will also select the graphical components like colors and fonts, as well as create the actual graphics like icons and images. The designer used tools for user experience and graphics design like Photoshop and Sketch. The main responsibility of the developer is to create a solid implementation and the operations of the end result. The developer manages the continuous delivery pipeline, which includes the build, test, deploy and distribution, and also code both the implementation and unit tests. The developer operates all environments, including the production environment, and is the one that creates most of the automations. The developer's main tool is an integrated development environment like Visual Studio or IntelliJ and also tools for continuous delivery like Visual Studio Team Services. The main responsibility of the tester is to make sure that the end result has high quality. This means proactivity work with everyone in the team to make sure that all work happens with quality. So it's not really about finding bugs, but really preventing them. The tester also implements the automatic tests for the user interface and integrate those tests in the, the continuous delivery pipeline. The tester also perform manual exploratory testing. The tester use tools for test automation like Selenium and Appium and make use of device clouds to test on as many form factors as possible. Okay, so now that you know how it should work, how do you get there? The short version is to be agile about it. Just try and then adapt. To be more specific, I think you should start with an objective that is important to the business and that has executive support. It should probably not be business critical, but highly relevant. And in the best case, something that the business have been struggling with for a long time. A typical objective could be a touch point like an app, a web, a bot or a connected thing. And the more customers that could benefit from it, the better it is. If it has a clear revenue or cost saving goal, it's even better. The next step is to set up a digital platform. And it is primarily about allowing the touch points to move faster than the backend systems. It is the foundation that allows you to create beautiful digital solutions. The recommendation is to set it up in a public cloud, but it can also be done in a private cloud or on premise. Make sure that an architect is involved to help with setup, management, governance, and integration with the backend systems as well as other on-premise resources, for example, for identity management. Now it's time to put together an autonomous team as described before. Let them create their own work environment with things like an actual workspace, the tools they use, the way they work and so on. Define clear boundaries in the form of a budget and the first delivery, for example, after one month. Then you have to make sure that they are not killed by the old ways of working, the old silos, etc. Just like a startup acting in an environment of high uncertainty, 
they should be allowed to experiment within the defined boundaries. In short, get out of their way and let them learn how to excel. As they have clear metrics and deliver often, their progress is easy to follow. When that team is up and running, don't scale up too fast. And in the beginning, do it one team at a time. It took Microsoft seven years. It started with Aaron Björk, shown here, that was having problem in his team and he started to work in an agile way. Since it worked, they convinced a few more teams to do the same. And then his boss, Brian Harry, turned the 25 team Visual Studio Group agile. As it also was a huge success, he turned the whole de development division of 4,000 people agile. It started to spread to other parts of the company, and in 2015, the CEO, Satya Daniela, made Agile the company-wide way of working. So what are the different ways that we can help? First, we can provide you with a complete autonomous team to get you started. And then we can gradually involve your employees in this way of working, which include the Agile process and the tools and technologies. We can also provide you with a partial team or even just one of the roles, but please note that with only one role, it can be a challenge to get everyone else to work in this way. Of course, we can help you with all the technical stuff, like setting up a cloud platform. So are you ready to get going? And what do you need? Don't hesitate to contact me if you have any questions or are interested in getting started today. Thank you.